Hi, I'm Neil Barr from Gecko Geotechnics. Welcome to our presentation on the practical application of the Q-slope method for rock-slope engineering. I'd like to acknowledge my co-author, Dr. Nick Barton of Nick Barton & Associates in Norway, with whom we've developed this method over the last five plus years. I'd also like to acknowledge colleagues from around the world who've contributed case studies to the method. There are millions of slopes around the world. Some are designed by rock engineers, and many are designed by foremen or machinery operators. Here you can see some simple cases, dangerous and convenient cases. Weathered materials need to be removed or cut to very shallow angles, and not just painted with shotcrete. Or supported using grouted piles, in cases where there appear to be toothpicks given the scale of the problem. Let's take a quick look at this valley of rock slopes, an access for a railway bridge in Kashmir. Are we skillful, trusting, or merely reckless? Millions of such slopes are excavated around the world each year. How many are adequately engineered? How can we choose optimal rock slope angles for a dam site, a tunnel site, bridge, and other access roads or for a new road or widening of a road in hilly terrain, for a new motorway in hilly terrain where no tunnels are required, or for a new open pit mine, particularly when applying to bench faces, and where there is not a culture or need for tens of thousands of anchors. Here's an example problem. How to cut slopes for a 20 kilometer long dam access in this steep valley? Well, we can do some basic sketches for the dam site, but the client in this case actually wanted to minimize rock slope reinforcement and avoid tunnels, or in other words, effectively wanted to remove a mountain in some cases to achieve stable slopes. We often need to make some very basic decisions. Will the slope angle range from 45 to 90 degrees, or will it be shallower than 45 degrees? And we can make some common sense-based solutions based on dominant joint or discontinuity orientations. Here there are more than five stable options denoted by S. That is, we design the slope to suit the structure. Q-slope was introduced at the Euroc 2015 conference in Salzburg, Austria, with additional notes being discussed at AMA the following year. It was published in Rock Mechanics and Rock Engineering Journal in 2017 with over 400 case study backing the method. In 2018, a relationship between P-wave velocity, VP and Q-slope was defined. It is not our intention to promote Q-slope as an alternative method where more rigorous slope stability analyses are required. Such, when warranted and time and resources permit, are always preferred. The Q-slope method for rock slope engineering is based on the original Q system. Here you can see the formula for Q-slope. RQD and JN, or joint set number, remain unchanged, as do JR and JA. However, an orientation factor has been included to adjust for potential wedges. JW, now termed J Weiss, accounts for new structure for slopes, including ice effects and tropical rainfall effects. SRF has new categories tailored specifically for slopes. These parameters may seem very familiar to Q system users. RQD, JN, JR, and here on the next slide, JA. Nothing has changed in these parameters. JR divided by JA is like a friction coefficient, the same as before. The meaning of JR divided by JA multiplied by the O factor is for both sides of potential wedges when applicable. Orientation factors are set for both joint sets where applicable, for set one or the dominant joint set and for set two the secondary set. 
The discontinuity orientation factor, or O factor, is described in the table at the top. Engineering judgment is required when selecting the factor, and it's based on how favorable or unfavorable that geological structure is. Apply the orientation factor to the most unfavorable joint set, and where required, apply a second one to the secondary joint set that could form potentially a wedge. J Weiss, or the environmental and geological condition number, replaces JW. It is more sophisticated since slopes are outside exposed to the elements forever. J Weiss considers the environment, whether it's a desert, a wet environment, tropical storms, or ice wedging. It also considers whether the general structure is stable or unstable and the competency of the rock. Some visual descriptors of O factor examples. Clockwise from the top left, very unfavorable bedding or foliation being undercut by the slope and causing failure if unsupported where the friction angle is low enough. Vertical or subvertical foliation can be quite favorable unless it's narrowly spaced in weak material in which there is toppling potential. In that case, you would downgrade the O factor further. And finally, horizontal strata is usually quite favorable. Some other examples. Very favorable to favorably orientated joints forming cubical blocks in Norway. Very unlikely to have any form of instability. In this example from saprolitic rocks in Panama, two otherwise quite unfavorable relic joints forming a wedge. In this photograph, you can see unfavorably orientated foliation in Philat. However, the joints striking into the slope are quite favorable. This is an example from typical goldfield settings in Western Australia. From Mount Isa in Queensland, very unfavorable bedding plains in siltstone. These constantly cause localized instability. However, the vertical joints and joints dipping into the slope are generally favorable. An example from a large copper mine in Papua New Guinea. Extremely unfavorable joints daylighting into the excavation on successive benches, causing failure when unsupported. Slopes are exposed to the elements forever. Allow for susceptibility to weathering in your assessments. Here you can see a rock that is extremely weathered in a period of only two months. Strength reduction factors have been tailored specifically for slopes. There's a total of three. SRFA refers to the physical condition of the slope, where you can account for tension cracks, susceptibility to weathering, or if the slope is in late stages of erosion. SRFB refers to stress and strength. Here, sigma C refers to the unconfined compressive strength of the material, and sigma 1, the principal in situ stress. SRFC refers to any major discontinuities such as fault or shear zones within the slope and how favorable or unfavorable they are with respect to the excavation. SRF slope is taken from the maximum of SRF A, B and C. Q slope is based on over 500 case studies from around the world. In these figures, on the left hand side you can see the slope heights which it was applied to, and on the right the slope angles. Green refers to cases that are stable slopes, purple refers to quasi-stable slopes, and red refers to failed slopes. Quasi-stable slopes were defined by major signs of cracking and dislodgement with the potential for failure, or those identified by monitoring systems. In most of those cases, the quasi-stable slopes failed shortly after they were identified. Q-slope today. There are case studies from Australia, Asia, the Americas, and across Europe. Rock types include igneous rocks, sedimentary, and metamorphic. This figure presents the Q-slope data with over 500 case studies. Q-slope is described on the x-axis, which is in logarithmic scale, 
and the y-axis shows the slope angle. Green triangles represent stable slopes. Failed slopes are shown by red crosses and quasi-stable slopes by purple squares. A line of best fit is drawn to separate stable and failed slopes. Here, this line corresponds to a Q-slope value of 0.01, representing a slope angle of 25 degrees, a Q-slope of 0.1 representing 45 degrees, Q-slope of 1, 65, Q-slope of 10, 85, matching the equation shown on the screen. With this understanding and this data, we can then create a stability chart. With the red zone being areas where slopes are expected to be unstable, and the green zone stable, with an uncertain area in between. Isopotential lines can be used to estimate probability of failure by only considering failed and quasi-stable slopes, or unwanted events. It's acknowledged that other interpretations of this data are possible, however these isopotential lines were derived by being parallel to the Q-slope equation on the previous slide. Q-slope application. Improving rock mass quality with depth from saprolite to weathered rock to fresh rock corresponds to increasing Q-slope values and also slope angles, as you can see in this example from Panama. Similarly, when there are improving geological structure orientations, for example here, bedding steepening with depth, and also improving rock mass quality with depth, Q-slope values increase, and as does the bench face angle, in this example from a copper mine in Laos. Let's look at some case studies and examples. Here is a 5 meter high slope excavated in saprolytic fillite for a residential subdivision. It was cut at 40 degrees with no design. The relic structures, both joints, shears and bedding planes, are quite favourable as they're striking into the slope. The RQD is low, as is the rock strength. Applying Q-slope, we have an RQD of 12.5 on average, a joint set number of 6 joint roughness of 2, joint alteration JA of 1, favourable conditions for the orientation of the joints, 1, a J Weiss of 0 0.6 and a strength reduction factor B of 7. Applying Q-slope we get a Q-slope value of 0 0.357 which corresponds to a long-term stable slope angle of 56 degrees. In this case, the slope was steepened to 50 degrees and an additional 70 square metres of salable land area was available for the client. Example 2 shows an excavation that failed shortly after excavation. This is in fresh quartzite with very high rock strength. A bedding plane is dipping outwardly at 50 degrees and the slope angle prior to failure was 55 degrees. A Q slope of 0 0.21 was obtained, which corresponds to a beta angle of 51 degrees, effectively the orientation of the bedding plane. Here you can see the calculation steps, whereby RQD was on average 95 and the joint set number was 12, joint roughness was 1, joint alteration 3, O factor applied was 0 0.25, which is causing failure if unsupported and J Weiss of 0 0.8 and an SRF based on physical condition of 2.5. The third example shows a wedge failure in moderately weathered siltstone with quite low UCS. It was excavated at 65 degrees and failed a few weeks later. The slope height is only 30 meters in this case. Q slope was applied with an average RQD of 55 to a joint set number of 9, and here, because it's a wedge, both sides of the wedge were applied. So the first, or the dominant plane, had a JR of 1 and a JA of 4, and it was quite unfavourable with an O factor of 0 0.5. The second plane was a little bit more rough with a JR of 3, but similar in filling with a JA of 4 
and an O factor of 0.9. J. Weiss was one in this desert environment with otherwise generally stable structure, and an SRF2 of 2.5 was applied. This corresponded to a Q-slope value of 0 0.206 and a stable slope angle of 51 degrees, which was 15 degrees shallower than excavated and consistent with kinematic analysis for wedges in this case. The fourth example shows a stable slope of 70 metres in height in limestone in Serbia. Relatively uniform rock mass quality is visible across the height of the slope. The road tunnel in the foreground is unsupported and has been stable for over 70 years. This is an alpine environment that experiences freeze and thaw during the winter period. Q-slope was applied and an average RQD value of 95% was used. JN of 9, JR and JA were both 3 and favourable joint orientation factor of 1. An SRFB factor of 3 was used for the stress and strength relationship and Q-slope accounted to be 3.167 which corresponded to a long-term stable slope angle of 75 degrees, which is steeper than the current angle. In 2002, the relationship between P-wave velocity, VP, and the Q-system Q-value was found by normalising the Q-value with unconfined compressive strength, or sigma C. The normalised Q-value, QC, is defined by the sigma C divided by 100 multiplied by the Q value. P wave velocity VP in kilometers per second can be estimated by adding 3.5 to the log of QC. Similarly, QC can be estimated from VP. This shows an example of the Q histogram method in which logging is done statistically or probabilistically, as you map a slope or drill core. Parameters shift to the right, as you can see here, with improving ground conditions. In this example of a motorway project in Panama, the objective was to determine how much forest clearing was required for roadway cuttings. Seismic refraction was used alongside outcrop mapping. Here, higher P-wave velocity or VP values corresponded to higher Q values in the Q system. Steeper bench slope designs were feasible as ground conditions improved in this case with depth. P-wave velocity and Q-slope. The Q value and therefore QC do not consider the orientation of geological structures relative to the slope, which are accounted with, by with the O factor in Q-slope and the environmental conditions in which the slope is constructed, or J. Weiss. Also, the slope SRF ratings in most cases should be equal to 1, as they were already considered in the Q value. So, Q slope is approximated by QC, normalised by the O factors, and J. Weiss divided by SRF slope or by replacing QC in the equation by 10 to the power of VP minus 3.5. Borehole geophysics and Q-slope were used in combination in this example. Full waveform acoustic logs and acoustic teleview was available for siltstones and sandstones. Weathering decreases and UCS increases with depth at this site. P-wave velocities were found to be low in moderately weathered siltstone and slightly higher in slightly weathered siltstone, and considerably higher in slightly weathered sandstones. O-factors were derived from stereographic projections relative to the proposed slope design. P-wave velocity, or VP, was used to approximate Q-slope, which in turn was used to estimate stable slope angles. In this case, in moderately weathered siltstone, long-term stable slope angles were estimated to be 61 degrees using this approach. 
The slope was excavated at 65 degrees in a mine with considerable monitoring instrumentation, and this remained stable. In the slightly weathered sandstone, which has higher strength and less weathering, a Q-slope angle of 75 degrees was identified using this method. Slope angles were cut at 75 degrees and were also generally stable. Some key points. Engineering judgment is used in all empirical methods, including Q-slope. It is recommended to use a range of appropriate inputs, for example, RQD of 25 to 35%, rather than a single value. And where there's uncertainty about a parameter, test the sensitivity of that parameter with respect to the results. SRFB, stress and strength, has a tendency to dominate in weak rocks and in high slopes. Appropriately estimating in situ stress and in rock strength are quite important. In slopes that are stronger or smaller, stability is often dictated by individual sets of discontinuities or major faults. For high slopes that require several stages of excavation, engineers should have ample time to check their Q-slope results against conventional methods. Q-slope has the benefit that it is intuitive and fast. It can reduce problematic and costly bench failures and reduce the requirement for ongoing maintenance. In mining, Q-slope can also be used to locally steepen slope angles and reduce overburden excavation or increase ore recovery. A relationship between Q-slope and VP has been established. Q-slope is just one of the many faces of Q. Q parameters have been used in drill core logging and in geological investigation, as well as in application for conventional tunneling and cavern design for over 40 years. Relationships between Q and seismic velocity and deformation modulus have been well established, including changes with respect to depth. QH2O applies to water control, water transfer and permeability and QTBM is used for TBM prognosis and particularly for tunnel delays in fault zones. Thank you very much for taking the time to listen to my presentation. Should you have any questions, feel free to email me. My email is on the bottom of the screen.